Hi, John Collins here, the Paper Airplane Guy, world record holder for Paper Airplane Distance. Today, something a, a little different. If you've never been to my YouTube channel before, <laughs> you're in for a big treat here. We're doing the Boomerang 2. Now, this is a really difficult plane to fold, even more difficult to adjust, but the payoff is tremendous. Look at what this guy does. It flies out, flips over, and flies back upside down. Now, it's changing its dihedral angle in flight. You'll see it on this angle. It flies out forward. I got some positive dihedral angle here. And then it does this crazy stall and watch for the dihedral angle change. The body of the plane opens up, boom, right there, changes dihedral angle. Now I've got positive dihedral upside down. So <laughs> two flight modes, positive dihedral on the way out. And then after the flip, positive dihedral angle on the way back. So right side up, upside down, positive both ways. Now, tricky to fold, I'm not gonna lie to you. Tricky to adjust, not gonna lie to you. And then you have to learn how to throw it. So there's a lot of difficulty built in. This is like pop, 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 way up here. If all you've done is pop, 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 down here, you're gonna have a hard time making this plane, but here we go. Now I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper. Uh, this is 24 pound paper right here. Um, I generally, all my planes are really designed to fly with 20 pound paper, except the follow foils. Those really lightweight things I fly with cardboard. Uh, I use 24 pound a lot for my travel kit because these planes get banged around as I go around the country. So I just have 24 pound paper laying around all the time. Uh, but 20 pound paper, just the stuff in your average printer or copier works great. Uh, and I'm gonna demo with uh, 24 pound, but it's just US letter size, eight and a half by 11. If you're using A4 or international letter size, chop off a strip along the bottom, about 19 millimeters and you'll have the right ratio. So here we go. Folding in half. Oop, I got a little bit of schmutz on that corner there. That weird piece of paper. Came off the cutter, weird, I guess, at the factory. And folding in half right there. And now what we're gonna do is find the middle of this crease edge that we just created. I'm gonna spin it, just so it's a little bit easier for me to move those corners together. And I'm just gonna do a little tick mark right there. That's the halfway point right there on that creased edge. And now I'm gonna find the one quarter point uh, only, you know, on the Boomerang 1, we use a tick mark. On the Boomerang 2, we use a whole crease. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up at this point, and I'm going to fold this uh, one end of the crease all the way to the center here, just like this. So I'm going to make a crease all along here, just like that. And that's going to mark, that's going to be a landmark for my next uh, move here. So you can see what I've done. I, uh, create, I folded the page in half, found the center point of the crease, and then you could fold it like this. You could fold that corner over like that, uh, but I just find it's a little more accurate to open it up and, and make the crease like that. So you could leave it folded and just move that corner over. You could do that. Um, so here we go. The next move is to fold this corner over to this crease and do the, the resulting crease is gonna end up uh, so that it starts at this corner and sweeps down this way. And what you're doing is just lining up this corner with that creased edge and making, and when you're doing that, make a crease that goes all the way up to this upper left corner. Now, this is the open edge up here. Let me just make sure that you see that. This is the open edge up here. The closed edge is down here. This is the crease that, where we folded it in half. And this is our one quarter mark right here. And I'm moving this corner over to meet that one quarter mark in such a way that the crease ends up moving all the way up to this upper left corner where we have the two open corners. Now, if you folded the boomerang one, if you started there, you're in luck. All this folding will look very familiar to you. Uh, we're just making a different size pocket. We're, all still, we're gonna do all that nonsense where we do the squash fold in a moment and put the corners in the pocket, all the same stuff. We're just making a different size pocket to begin with here. All right, so uh, we've got a flap here. Let's open it up. We're gonna squash fold it. We're opening these two layers right here and then moving this crease right here down to the center. We're gonna move it just to the left-hand edge of this edge right here. This is the edge I'm talking about right here. Just moving it just to the left-hand edge because it is gonna to have to have enough space to wrap around. So now you can leave it like this and just wrap it like that. That's one way to go. Or you can flip it over and carefully follow the crease here like this, whatever you prefer. I'm showing you the flip over thing because a lot of people find that easier. Let's flip it back this way. And once again, if you've done the boomerang one, this is gonna look very familiar. If you've not done it, it's kind of brand new. So what we're gonna do is take these corners up here and one at a time, we're gonna put them in this pocket here. So you've got a pocket on this side, you've got a pocket on this side. And that happened because we squash folded, right? We created those two pockets and folded one behind. So 
what we're going to do now is start to put this corner in the pocket and you'll see when you bring it down there it's just too wide it doesn't fit right so the first thing is to position it as though it were going in the pocket just like that and make a crease that goes to the rear and you're going to end up going well past the corner here part a lot of the corner is going to be bent over so just keep that in mind it doesn't have a nice neat landmark on that end you're just trying to get this corner close to the bottom of the pocket there okay flip it over make the side match Got a bottom of the pocket and these two corners back here. You can line up this corner and the bottom of the pocket. And we're going to make the crease right there. There we go. Symmetry as always. I just like the nose of the plane pointed left. I just like that. You, you can leave it flipped the other way if you want. You're going to do exactly the same thing to both sides. All right, now we're going to narrow this point so that it fits into this pocket right here. You can see it doesn't right now. It's way too wide. And so what we're going to do is is narrow it and we're just going to move up just grab this top layer here we're going to move it up and make a crease that follows the shape of this pocket and the crease is going to end up just inside of that where the pocket is because I don't need it to be any any more to the left than that I'm just going to make the crease so that it's just inside that pocket and make it go to the point there and then just go just take the crease all the way up to the top so here I was like this. You can see where the new crease is going. And it's making this corner able to fit into that pocket. So now that we've got it narrow enough, don't pay any attention to the back of the plane at this point. It's going to be doing all kinds of weird stuff. Don't worry about that yet. Now, so keep that pinch together here for a moment. Just pinch it together like that. Open up the pocket and just put it in there. And now you can see that the, the plane is not laying flat in any way, shape, or form. It's all kind of curved and cattywampus. Cattywampus, that's a technical term. No, no, it's not. Uh, so as you can see, it's, it's curved. It's bent every which way but loose here. Uh, now we're going to flatten it. So let's start by pressing it flat on the table, uh, the, the front and the rear. And you'll, this, this will start to come down. And what you want to do is try to line up the raw edges at the rear of the plane so that they're kind of together. You can see that this single layer, you can try to get it pretty close to this back edge here. It might not go all the way against it, but get it pretty close. And then from the front of the pocket up to this top corner here is where you want to flatten it as well. So get it pretty close to that back edge, right on it if you can. There might be enough give in the paper to do that. And then kind of start to smooth it out. So there we go. I've got that corner in the pocket. You can see it's in there and I've flattened out the plane. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to flip it over and start to narrow that point so that it fits in there. And once again, it looks like that. I'm just making a crease that starts down there in the shape of the pocket and then following it all the way up to that, to the top edge there, just like that. See, it goes all the way to that top corner there. And now I'm just gonna put it in the pocket. Open the pocket up, put it in there. Once again, it's all kind of cattywampus and weird looking, and now I have to flatten it out carefully. So starting at the front, I'm going to bend that down, and this raw edge should end up right against the, the back of the plane there. And you're going to make a new crease that goes from the front of the pocket up to the top here, and try to keep that raw, the back edge here lined up with the back of the plane. So it's going to look a bit like this. You're just going to ease it into position. Go slowly. You don't have to go fast. There's no need to go quickly here. And by the way, you can always hit pause on the video if you think I'm going too fast for you to follow. Just hit pause and catch up. Not a problem. Okay, there we go. Both sides done, and now what we're going to do uh, is start to widen the wings back out here a bit. And to do that, we're going to make a crease that goes from this corner all the way down here to the front of the pocket. So we're just lifting up this corner here, and this will make the wings a bit wider so that the thing will fly the way we want. All right, that's one side done. We're going to flip it over and move up that flap from the other side. Again, just this top layer only, lifting up. And it goes from the front of the pocket to this corner here. But you've got these, this corner and this corner to line up, so you should be able to get this one way easier than the other one. Going from the front of the pocket all the way to that rear corner. Boom. Done. Now we're going to do a squash fold. We're going to open up this center crease so it lays flat. And this edge right here is going to end up lined up when we squash it. It's going to end up lined up with the center crease. So step one, open it up like this. Start to widen it out. You see I'm widening it out. I'm just pulling these layers apart here. Uh, I'm going to spin it 
just so that the, the big side is up. This is the front of the plane pointed at me. I'm opening this up now, and I'm going to keep an eye on these two corners here. So these two corners right here are going to end up right up against this uh, center crease as well as I widen them out. So I'm opening that up, keeping an eye on those two corners as I bring them down. I'm going to have to kind of help shape the plane as you go. And these two corners are going to end up right along the center crease as we squash that pocket thing flat. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. So we're just making a big squash fold at the front of the plane. Now you'll see a little bit of bubbling here, a little bit of bubbling here. We're going to sweep that out flat. So start here. We're just going to push the layering toward the outside of the plane, sweeping that flat. Push the layering to the outside of the plane, sweeping that flat. Uh, and at this point, before we start playing with these corners here a little bit to move some weight forward, uh, it's a good idea to flex this center crease both directions. Just go that way, go that way, go that way, go that way. You want that center crease to be nice and flexible to allow the body of the plane to open up when it flips upside down. So flex this guy a few times like that. Just kind of get that kind of loosened up for yourself. Uh, the next move here, uh, we're going to move some of this layers that's sticking toward the back of the plane. We're going to move it a little bit forward to give ourselves a little more um, momentum on the nose of the plane when it starts to swing. So I'm taking this edge right here and I'm moving it against this edge right here like that and doing the same thing to this side, just moving those edges, one, one edge right up against the other edge. And then I'm going to reverse these creases so that this corner, instead of being on top, is like flipped underneath. So just going to follow that crease and flip that under, follow that crease and flip that under. And Whoa, that didn't come out even, did it? Maybe I should be a little more careful about how I'm moving that under. There we go. That's a little closer. That's better. All right. So um, the other thing we're going to do here is make these, this edge here is going to end up being sort of a landing gear kind of idea. Uh, I'm going to flip this around so the top is pointing up. And you can kind of see that layer underneath there. It's a, like a ghost of a layer underneath there. If you can't see it really clearly on your model, if you don't have a table that's lit this well, an easy way to identify it is just take your thumbnail and just kind of use the braille method, just kind of find that crease and run your thumbnail along that crease just to mark it. So I've marked that, that crease right there with the little thumbnail push. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to run my thumbnail along that edge there. You can find it pretty easily. You can just find it with your, your thumbnail. And so what I've done there is, is mark that edge there, mark that edge there. You know, if I hold it up to the light, you'll see it really easily. You know, if I hold it up like that, you, you can see the layering underneath there pretty easily. It, it, it's not so obvious when it's flat on the table like this. So it's easier just to kind of mark it with your thumbnail. And you can see where that, that little thumbnail mark is there. Uh, let's see. Can you see it? Let's see. There it is. That thumbnail mark. There you go. On both sides. You can really see it clearly on this side. You can kind of see it on this side here. So now what we're going to do is take these outside edges over to those marks. And this is just going to create kind of a little landing gear appendage here. So I'm taking this whole outside edge over to that thumbnail mark. So I've started here, taking this edge over to the thumbnail mark like that. I'm going to do this side as well. That's going to help my strength of the plane front to back. And if the plane were to land, it's got landing gears to land. Okay, so. And now flip it over. And we're going to follow this center crease to fold it in half. Here we go. And I'm just going to rotate it so the nose is pointed left. Now we're going to make a crease that starts at the nose and rakes up this way. And we're going to use the, uh, this kind of a phoenix wing fold kind of idea. This edge is going to end up touching right here. So I'm moving this over, starting close to the nose, moving this over. And this edge is just going to touch that rear corner of the plane, just about like that. Well, I didn't like where it ended up on the nose, so I'm going to go just a little bit deeper on the nose. I didn't make the crease yet. I'm just kind of lining it up. And uh, there we go. That uh, looks much better. All right. You want to make sure this is close-ish to the nose. Right on the nose, it doesn't have to be perfectly on the nose, but it's got to be pretty close. So, you know, maybe, maybe within, a you know, like a quarter inch or so. Uh, let's flip it over. You can see I just hit that corner with that crease back there. That's perfect. And now I'm going to make this side match. Rolling that guy over, getting those corners lined up, and then pressing flat there. All right, 
We've got the winglet crease to go, which is just bending this, this little guy up just short of this layer right here, keeping it parallel with the main wing crease. There we go. There's one winglet done and parallel with the main wing crease, just short of that layer right there. Flip it over, make this guy match. And the tricky thing, there's two tricky things. Everything about this plane is tricky. So you've got the, the fuselage is, is flexible now, so it should be able to flop both directions easily. So let's start by keeping it on its back and straightening up our landing gears here. That's thing number one. So we've got those guys that way. Let's get our winglets sticking up this way. I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of up elevator right here to help it do its stall. And then I'm going to do some downward bend right here at the nose. This is kind of a tricky move here. I'm going to bend this down right here, right, right along there. And that'll help it when it's flying upside down. That'll help it overcome the up elevator back there, this downward crease right here. And it's kind of pinching those top layers down on both sides. It's kind of got a little, a little move like that. So, and then what you want to pay attention to, what this ends up being really critical is the angle this outside edge leaves this point and this outside edge leaves this point. If these guys, if this angle doesn't match, it's going to turn one direction or another. You can correct with rudder control here, here, and here, but it's better to not have to do that. It's better to make sure that this little outside edge and this outside edge are leaving those corners at the same angle. You want that to be pretty good. You want all of these guys to be straight all the way back, your winglet straight up and down. Uh, and so then you'll have a slight positive dihedral angle on the way out. And then as it opens up after the stall and it's upside down, you'll have positive dihedral upside down. So that is the boomerang too. Think of throwing it like about 10 feet out. You're not going to throw it a great distance forward, just a little bit forward, you know, goes 10, 12 feet out, does that stall, flips over and flies back upside down. Again, it looks like this. Uh, you can see that all the little crimp folds there. So it's really easy toss, just enough to get at the stall and flip over and come back. Uh, and it does take some practice on the throw, of course. It's not really straightforward. It's stalling, of course, because it's a bit tail heavy. This, the, this design is really not a very good plane, but it will stall reliably. Uh, and if it's not, then add a little more up elevator. And if it's not flying back upside down, do a little more downward bend on the nose. And of course, you know, play with that dihedral angle um, uh, along the, the body of the plane. So you can see that little crimp at the nose, a little downward crimp. You can, I'm, my winglet's kind of blocking my up elevator on this photo right here. But the body of the plane, that main center crease needs to be flexible. And you've got all these control surfaces to kind of fool around with to get this plane, uh, plane flying exactly the way you want. So very tricky to fold, very tricky to adjust, but it's well worth your time. It's quite an astounding trick uh, when you get this thing flying right. John Collins here, the paper airplane guy, world record holder for paper airplane distance. You can always visit the website and pick up a copy of the book where we go over the aerodynamics in more detail. And there's 24 great planes in there. All the planes from my paper airplane show uh, are in there. Thanks for stopping by the YouTube channel. I'm posting more videos all the time, so keep on coming back and checking stuff out. I'll see you next time right here.